I want to welcome everyone. Uh, on behalf of uh, everyone from Dragos and from the Cyberwire, uh, I'm Dave Bittner, and I am the host of the Cyberwire podcast. Uh, we want to thank all of you for joining today, joining us today for our webinar here. This is Threat Intelligence Explained, Examined, and Exposed. Uh, looks like we've got a great group of folks uh, joining us here. Uh, I want to introduce uh, our main host this afternoon or this morning. This is Sergio Caltagirone. He is Vice President of Threat Intelligence at Dragos. I'm going to uh, read Sergio's bio here. Sergio hunts evil. He spends his days tracking hackers and nights chasing human traffickers. In his nine years with the U.S. government and three years at Microsoft, he hunted the most sophisticated targeted threats in the world, applying intelligence to protect billions of users while safeguarding civilization through the protection of critical infrastructure and industrial control systems. He co-created the diamond model of intrusion analysis, helping thousands bring more pain to adversaries by strengthening hunters and analysts. He also serves as technical director of the Global Emancipation Network, which is a nonprofit dedicated to ending human trafficking through data science and analytics, saving, saving tens of millions of lives. Sergio, great to uh, speak with you again. I'm just going to hand things over to you and let you take over here. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. Um, so, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome from New Zealand, from Slovakia, um, and uh, Texas, uh, their own little country over there. Um, and, you know, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And we're going to talk um, a bit about threat intel. And I hope this doesn't take too long out of your day. Um, you know, these, I like these to keep you know, kind of short and sweet. And then we'll uh, jump into some questions. I've been doing threat intelligence now for God, 20 years. Um, and it's, of course, its name has changed. You know, it was digital forensics and, you know, it was incident response. And that kind of still is the case. And it's now it's got flavors of those and it's kind of changed and morphed over time. Um, it was intrusion analysis for a while and all this stuff. So anyway, um, but what I really want to do is get to the idea of, you know, what, uh, what we're going to accomplish here, right? What we're going to, um, what, what we want to accomplish with Threat Intel. And a couple of things here, right? Uh, we're going to record this and everybody can you see it. Um, basically, there's, you know, no phones, but that should be easy. Uh, if you see the Q&A button um, at the top there. Go ahead and ask questions through there and then use the chat if you have any technical questions you need to address. The... Um, went backwards there. There we go. So the problems that we see being addressed by threat intelligence. So uh, are in policy space, there are still a lot of folks who don't understand the risk of cybersecurity or invest sufficiently um, in the space. And honestly, there's a lot of folks in in information security and cybersecurity who are like, hey, I've been doing this for 20 years and this is all I've been talking about. Why don't you guys understand it yet? And you feel like you're banging your head on the wall, right? Um, and I get it. I'm I'm with you here, uh, but the fact is, I visit I visit boards of directors, um, I visit uh, CEOs and CSOs, and um, it, and it's not necessarily that they don't understand cybersecurity as a problem. They absolutely do. It's just always a challenge of one, um, you know, limited resources and uh, and choices, right? Which is I, you know, in in, in the industrial space, for instance, we'll have. Um, uh, we'll walk in and we'll talk to a site manager um, and they will say, you know, do I, do I buy a cybersecurity box or do I go and do I maintain at a uh, turbine? Um, and they're like, well, where's my money going to go? And these are important questions. And so we all have to realize that we're not in a bubble and that um, these are very important questions that are being addressed. And so one of the and so one of the things we're trying to do with threat intel is try to explain the threat clearly um, so that people can make better choices. And that choice isn't always, we need to invest more in cybersecurity, unfortunately. That is not always the right choice. Um, but it always needs to be one that is best informed with uh, information. The next problem we are addressing with threat intelligence is strategy, which is, okay, so say you want to invest in cybersecurity, what do you do now? Um, do I go and I uh, go, go, go after some new machine learning that's going to help me um, fight uh, insider threats or, um, you know, identify user behavior analytics that are necessary? Um, you know, what, what is, is it going to be the next, what's going to be the next big thing I have to focus on for my business? And I like to say that this is always like chasing the boogeyman. 
Um, and, and that's what we've done in, in information security, unfortunately, is created a whole bunch of boogeymen because a lot of times we haven't separated the reality from the research. And that's really important when it comes to the real world because honestly, you don't want companies investing their very limited resources on research problems. Um, that's all well and good, but again, when I have to make the choice of a blinky box or turbine maintenance, those are, I'd rather have them spend money on a real threat versus like a, oh, well, this could be really bad. Why don't you deal with this kind of threat? Um, and so these are, these are real world you know, decisions that we have to be very honest as practitioners um, and as people that you know, folks listen to about. And then the last one are defense, right? Which is, okay, when you get down to it, when you get down to your SOC, when you get down to operations, um, you know, when you even get into like uh, development and DevOps and you talk about, okay, how are we going to secure this and what are we going to do about it? Um, you know, and we, we focus very heavily on obviously the critical controls. And those are absolutely what everyone should focus on. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. There's no fairy dust here. There's no magic unicorn. Um, it's very basic things that people need to do better. Uh, and the industry itself needs to help people do better. But the fact is, even in organizations where the critical controls are done well, there are still gaps in those. Or in organizations where those critical controls can't necessarily be fully implemented, those, there needs to be gaps in place. And we see this a lot, especially in, again, in, I'm just going to use industrial control, where they can't deploy a patch until the next downtime maintenance window um, because they can't take the power plant offline. I'm sorry, but your power is probably more important than a patch. Um, and so we answer the question of, okay, well, what can we do with the firewall? Uh, what can we do with application blocking? Um, what can we do with other things that might be a gap to that critical control that can't be filled right now? And these are all parts of how Threat Intel um, addresses it, right? And so uh, the question is, what the heck is Threat Intel? I don't know. Everyone's got their own answer, and I've got my own thing. So I'm just going to tell you what I think it is, which is, Fundamentally, um, it uh, you know threat intel is uh, uh, reducing harm, and what that means is we improve decision making, and that's decision making at the policy level, at the strategy level, and at the detection level, at the d defense level. Um, so that means everything from telling a policymaker this is a major threat and we need more money, all the way down to this is a bad IP address and we need to block it. So some people think threat intel is like, you know, very strategic or very tactical. It's actually everything in there. Um, it's all the information you need to make good decisions. Um, and we generally value threat intel by uh, focusing on two major, um, uh, two major uh, performance indicators. One is reducing operational mean time of recovery, which is how fast can we get things back online? And the second one is reducing adversary dwell time, which is when they're in there, how fast can we recognize they're there and how fast can we kick them out? And Intel helps with both of those questions. So, um, so I keep going backwards, there we go. Um, so common questions you get for Intel, who, right? This is the one everyone talks about. This is one Dave and I were talking about before we got started here. Uh, is it the US, is it Russia, is it China, is it Israel, is it you know, um, Iran, North Korea? Well, you throw all of these big names around. Is it, uh, you know, um, a, uh, is it a major hacking group out of, out of Spain? Is it you know, a, um, a South Korean carding group? You know, it's all of this stuff, right? And it's a game we all love to play. Honestly, it's kind of just sexy and hot. And, it's just, it's out there. Uh, it, that tends to be really cool and clickbaity and people love to listen to the stories, but um, those are really hard questions. So generally what I tell people is don't focus on that one as much. Um, focus on all of the ones below, which are what are they using? You know, where are they focusing their efforts? Like what are their targets? Are they going after particular industries, particular data types like PII, medical records, uh, industrial operational planning, all that stuff? Um, when do they act, right? Is it, have they been acting since 2014? Are they acting, or did they just start? That has, a, that has an operational impact on how we decide about what we do. Um, why they're attacking, their motivations are very hard. We, I, don't, I like to say I don't like to play crystal ball, but we gotta understand kind of what they're going after, and then of course, how they operate. Um, it's probably the most important question of all threat intel. So really what it is, is very basic. Threat Intel transforms questions into answers, right? It says, what is the threat? What is the impact? And what should I do about it? And it basically boils it down to, why do I care? What should I do? And maybe why shouldn't I do it? Uh, a lot of people don't recognize a good Threat Intel also will tell you what not to do. 
Um, so sometimes it's a big article on the internet and it's like talking about all this bad stuff that could happen. Sometimes it's best just to tell people, yeah, there's just nothing there for us. We don't need to do anything about this. That's just as valuable as telling people when to act, just when not to act. Um, and that's something that I think we miss in Threat Intel is we generally like to tell a lot of like cool stuff happening, but we don't tell people the reality of like, oh yeah, this wasn't a big deal, don't worry about it. Um, so how do we use Threat Intel? Well, we make, it, we make stories relevant. I like to say Threat Intel are storytellers, right? We like to talk about uh, things that are happening in the world. We like to talk about why they matter. Um, and so it's effectively storytelling, make it relevant. Uh, we focus very heavily on um, shrinking the total space of the threat, right? Which is, you got all this bad stuff in your mind, right? As, as Dave was saying, you got like a quote unquote, okay, it's gonna be the cyber Pearl Harbor or whatever, you know, crap words people wanna throw out there, um, you know, at Congress or whatever. And it's like, well, no, 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 we gotta shrink it down, right? Cause we gotta make this problem um, solvable. And, and I think we, do pre, we, don't, we don't do that super well, but I think, we're, I think the industry is generally trying to get better. Um, and then the last one, of course, is providing tactical defense information. What should you block? What should you do? Uh, what's out there? How, you know, is it moving? Is, it, is this threat using Mimi cats? Is it throwing PS exec over the network or, you know, what have you? Um, and, and what are we going to do about it? Um, and so the idea here, though, is you should use that information across every part of your cybersecurity um, practice. Uh, you need to use it in response. Um, so when something bad happens, you should ask the question, well, how bad is it? How long have they been in here? Where else could they be? Um, you know, who else in the world have they possibly affected? Could I go talk to them? Could I go make friends so that I could learn from them to see what's happening? Uh, you know, create birds of a feather kind of approach. Uh, obviously, in prevention policy and education about what's going on in the world, what could we do about it? Um, do we need more money? Do we need more people? Do we need more blinky boxes? What, what can we get there? And then detection, right? How do we identify the threats using behaviors, right? And indicators are the thing you throw out the window. I like to call it the exhaust of the uh, digital forensics and intelligence analysis kind of um, process. Um, but the rest of it is really the behaviors, which is you know, knowing how they're operating across an environment is the most and beneficial way of doing detection. Um, so the last thing, I, I, a couple of just last notes here before we jump into questions, which is threat intel is business. Um, and and I, it, it, it could also be mission if you're a nonprofit or if you're government, but it's effectively the threat intelligence equals your business. And what that means to me is that um, you absolutely, as a, as, as a security provider or, or a security-minded organization, your threat intelligence has to be the same as your business. Meaning if you are a, uh, let's put it this way, if I'm a counter-human trafficking nonprofit, I don't care about carding forums on the, on the dark web, right? So I wouldn't go after Threat Intel about that. Um, I wouldn't try to produce it. I wouldn't try to procure it, all that stuff. So the, the idea is there is that Threat Intel is not one size fits all. We absolutely have to have it congruent with the business um, that, that we're, we're facing. And so in industrial control, we focus on these three elements, right? Which are what we call industry, um, uh, in interested adversaries, which ones are interested in getting in and doing something bad? Uh, they're not there yet, but they're getting there. Um, which ones have direct industrial control impact, which are trying to, sh you know, which are actively shutting down power, water, uh, oil and gas facilities and stuff like that. Um, and then the last one is uh, indirect impact, right? Which is, hey, when something gets into an industrial environment, maybe it does something really bad, even if it's not directed at an industrial environment. Um, and so in, in, in ICS cyber, just as an example of threat intel, in ICS threat intel, we look at these three components. And really, you don't look outside of that. Um, and so anything outside of that isn't really a relevant to protecting an industrial control environment. So, um, and so here is an example of where your threat intel has to equal your business, um, impact, uh, your business interests. Um, so the last thing I want to tell people, and this is really, I think, a uh, thing is that something I've learned over a long time which is how do you differentiate Threat Intel? Meaning there's a lot of stuff out there you could go buy, you can go get, you can go download, you can go integrate into your Splunk or whatever you have. Um, but what really, when you look at them, what is really the differentiator? First is data sources and visibility. Meaning um, that every data source and visibility gives you a different type of intelligence, a different view of the world. So you need to match your business needs with 
the data sources and visibility that that threat intel is using to generate its intelligence. Um, so for instance, if my threats are not on the dark web, I don't want to go buy web, dark web intelligence or go after somebody who's using dark web intelligence to produce, you know, something interesting. That's of no value to me. So that would be uh, <clears throat> a threat intel source that I may not be interested in. Um, a next one is contextual awareness, which is how well can they take that threat information and they, can they turn it into actionable business information for you? Which is if they don't know your business, right? If, if an intelligence producer who's working on carding information doesn't understand the financial system, then they're probably not going to be producing the right information to help the financial institutions protect against, you know, theft and fraud. And so contextual awareness is absolutely critical. It's not just about getting data and throwing big pipes of data at you. And the last one is action relevance, meaning if, you, if they tell you you should do something or um, inside the data are relevation, you know, revelations of you know, what the impact would be and stuff like that, they have to be relevant to what they're trying to protect. So you can't just, it, the, the days of you need to patch all the things and um, you should uh, air gap your network and take yourself offline and these things should not be internet fate. All of that boilerplate crap does not fly anymore in security operations, right? Um, and so the actions have to be relevant to the uh, environments and businesses and processes that they're trying to protect. Um, again, this is that threat intel is not a box you can buy. Um, it really has to be very tailored to what you're looking for. And of course, the rule is the best threat intelligence you will ever get in the world is that which you produce yourself. Um, and, uh, and, and so no matter what, that is absolutely the, the most critical element here. Um, so, you know, it, just again, one more example of why is, why is threat intel different in IT versus what we call OT, operational threat environment, uh, operational technology environments. You know, so first of all, the OT space is very different technologically uh, at, a, at a protocol level, um, hardware level, vendor level from an IT environment. And so you, don't, you can't use the same visibility. Um, I'm not going on the dark web looking for OT threats. I'm sorry, it's just not there. It's not the same environment. The OT ev effects, right, which are when bad things happen, um, the, uh, the behaviors are different from IT, right? When bad things happen in IT, it's not necessarily the same as when bad things happen in OT and things might blow up. And the last one is it's not the same mission, 